Hello everybody, this is Tara Betts and I'm here with another quick book chat and a recommendation for people to read during our continued shelter in place due to COVID-19. Um, I wanted to talk about this book because I've had some offline conversations with friends to talk about this particular book. And I'm amazed how many people have not heard about it. When it first came out in 2006, I know it was featured on Democracy Now! and in some other media outlets. And it's on the Harlem Moon imprint, which is a big imprint with Broadway books, according to this. But basically one of the large, yeah, Doubleday, one of the larger New York publishers put this book out. It's called Medical Apartheid by Harriet A. Washington. I don't know if it still looks like this now, if you get it in 2020, but I've had it probably since it first came out or around the time when they put out this paperback edition. Um, it's called Medical Apartheid, The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. And as we look at the, the rampant rates of mistreatment among black communities and now increasingly among Latino communities. I think this is a really important book to look at. Um, I thought about this one and uh, Dorothy Roberts book, Killing the Black Body. And if you are familiar with this book as well as Dorothy Roberts book, you know there's a whole history of medical experimentation that has been carried out on African Americans. And this book in particular talks not just about the Venus Hottentot and medical experimentation during slavery. It also talks about um, anatomical dissection that was carried out on black people in the past for public display. It talks about um, medical research during the Civil War, the Tuskegee experiments, which now a lot of people have heard about it um, because of the movie, I believe, I can't remember the name of the woman, but it was, um, I think it was Miss Evers Boys was the name of the film. Um, talks about radiation experience on black people. The eugenics movement, which has been carried out not just on black people, but on women in Puerto Rico when they forcibly or involuntarily rather removed women's uteruses and did not tell them. Uh, so there was that. There was research on black prisoners that was carried out in unethical experiments and those experiments kind of became the basis for uh, the Luke Cage comic book because if you follow Luke Cage you know he came out of a, an underground experiment that was conducted on him when he was in prison and that's how he developed this impenetrable skin, which is kind of strange when you think about the technology of skin grafts came out of experimentation on black people in prisons. Um, and then too, they talk a lot about experiments that have targeted children, in particular black children, and the thing that I was coming back to, and the gender, I mean, not the gender, but genetic uh, material and how that's been used, which now that we have the story of Henrietta Lacks that has been popularized by the book and the film that, were, that came out, um, she talks a little bit about that in the latter half of the book, but... I also think this book is important because the final chapter, Aberrant Wars, talks about bioterrorism. And I don't know if I can read a whole section of it. I think this is a really important book because it gives us some idea of what we might be experiencing with COVID-19. What if this is something people have not fully fleshed out. What is the long-term impact on people? Or maybe they have thought about it and they just are asking who is dispensable. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I do think it's important to be proactive and mindful about your health and to know the history of how 
health care has been conducted in the United States. So I'm going to read a short paragraph or two, and then um, I'll try to close out very shortly after that. So this is from a section in the Aberrant Wars chapter called Living Weapons. Bioterrorism employs chemical or biological agents such as microbes and poisons in the service of terrorism. Biological weapons often consist of disease-causing organisms, usually microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, or derivatives from humans, animals, or plants. These may exist in nature or may be produced by labs. Either way, they sicken or kill via infection or poisoning, but nuclear weapons and other chemical agents are also agents of bioterrorism because they can poison biological entities. For example, radiation poisoning, as well as killing them outright. Bioterrorism can kill people directly, or it can kill by destroying or polluting the water, animals, and plant life upon which people depend. And then basically they just go on where they give you historic instances in particular after World War II and in the post-war American agricultural program where they were talking about all these chemicals and weapons that they could not use anymore, including ricin, which if you're familiar with ricin, it's what they put in some forms of rat poison now. But um, I think it's an important book to look at. So if you have not heard of it, I know the screen isn't flipped around, but I want you to have an idea of what the book might look like. Uh, Medical Apartheid by Harriet A. Washington. And since she mentioned the environment in that definition, I've been meaning to read this is her new book. It's called A Terrible Thing to Waste, Environmental Racism and Its Assault on the American Mind. Harriet A. Washington, really thorough nonfiction author who I think is giving us a lot to think about. Like we have to move forward post pandemic and think about what do we need to do in our environment to change things and how do we need to govern differently? How do we need to um, rely on certain types of values so we can be more self-sustaining? And how do we build our communities? So I hope you guys are all thinking about that right now. And thank you for watching my previous videos. I hope to post more. I haven't posted in a while because I'm trying to reconfigure things just like everybody else. But I hope you're okay. Stay safe. Stay healthy.